With my first dungeon of the game maybe not quite coming to a close yet, but we're definitely making a lot of progress, I've been thinking more and more about the efficiency in my game development. Because we're about two years into developing this game, and to be fair, there is something to be said about wasting a lot of time. Here we are, two years in, and we have about a dungeon and a half worth of the game build. And the full game is going to include a total of six dungeons. So if you do the math, that means that the development for this full game would take anywhere from like eight to ten years, and I don't think that that's a fantastic idea. Now, to be fair, a lot of that early work, aside from just being inefficient and outright wasteful as far as time goes, was spent building up systems. Setting up foundations that make it easier now to actually build the game on top of. All the gameplay system and all that coding, that stuff that we can now reuse and go along with. Which brings me to the central point of this video, efficiency. The way I'm developing this game isn't necessarily the most efficient. I'm working on one dungeon at a time, more or less, bouncing between two different dungeons that are in different stages of development. And I'm pretty sure that even before I finish the first dungeon, I'll have started the third one. Part of that is deliberate. I want to be able to test this one piece at a time and get feedback. This is the first time I'm really doing anything on this scale. So being able to put out one dungeon, have people play it, get feedback on where things are going wrong, what was actually going well, that helps a lot. It helps inform me with development for the second dungeon. And then when I test the second dungeon, maybe even add in the updated first dungeon while being refined, I'm gathering information for the third one and so on and so forth. And ideally, every dungeon in this way will become better than the last one. But if I'm being honest, and I mean, really honest, that's only part of the story. The other part is basically that I have the attention span of a goldfish. This scattered multitasking workflow, it's the only way that I can maintain my focus on a project of this size. When I get bored of working on character models, I can switch gears and go code for a few weeks. When I get fed up with wrangling messy code, I can go do some level design. And when that burns me out, I can go revisit those old character models and then finally rig them up and animate them. Then when I remember that I'm actually a terrible animator, I can go make some visual effects to go feel better about myself. But this also means that I'm constantly working at the surface level of a lot of things. I'm probably a pretty decent programmer, I hope, but I'm not an amazing 3D artist or animator or texture artist or even a particularly great level designer. I've got a surface level, maybe a moderate level skill in most of those things, but I'm not really advancing deeply into any one of these areas because I'm only touching on them for a short period of time before then moving on to something else again. If I just said, okay, the next four months of my life, I'm going to do all the level design, I could probably block out every single room in the game, I'd get better at level design, I'd work faster, and the whole layout of the game would more or less be locked in. Then I could go back in later and add in the enemies and art and interactions and everything on top of that. But the problem is, doing that for four months would straight up drive me insane. Because then, when I am eventually making art for those levels, when I get tired of making these assets, That'll be the only thing that I can do at that point. There's nowhere else to go anymore. There's no other task that I can jump to to shake things up. The levels are done. There's nothing new and fresh to design for me anymore. As someone who is very scattered in how I work on games, I genuinely think that having a wide variety of tasks available to me at any given time is the thing that keeps me functioning. The narrower the scope of the tasks in front of me, the worse my output generally gets. I become less productive, not more. Of course, with that comes its own set of issues. As you approach the finish line of a project like this, your scope will naturally narrow. Eventually, you only have a handful of very specific, often quite boring, tasks to do. And I don't want to reach that point having finished all the stuff that I enjoy doing. Coding, designing ability, which I've been doing a lot of lately and I've been really enjoying. And even doing some effects work, even if I'm not amazing at it. If those tasks are all done and all I'm left with is a few months of just blando work, honestly, I don't know if I would be able to make it through that to the end. So the way I do things, batch work, the bouncing between these different disciplines, 
is not optimal, but it is what lets me actually get these things done. It's what will likely let me stick with this game to get it across the finish line, hopefully within the next two years or so. Right now, the Catacombs dungeon is in the phase where I'm putting in temporary art assets. These are dimensional blockouts with a couple of extra steps. The proportions of all of these pieces is more or less final, but the visuals are mostly placeholders. For example, this wall piece here is a thousand by a thousand by 300 units. I can go into Blender, tweak the design, re-export it, re-import it, and a new mesh just slots in because the dimensions are already locked. The modular pieces, walls, floors, etc. are all standardized now. So even if I want to replace them later on with totally different designs altogether, the layout of my levels won't break. While that's happening, the temple dungeon is now blocked out, and I'm super happy with the way that's looking so far. Honestly, I think it's shaping up to be a better dungeon so far than the catacombs. I might make a separate video about that later, because I have a lot of things to talk about there. But maybe I'll do that once I finish the third dungeon's block out, so we'll be halfway through the game. Which means I'm now working on more or less three dungeons at the same time, each in a different phase of production. One is in asset creation, one is just in the end stages of level design, and one is in the beginning of blockouts. As I wrap up the assets for the catacombs, I will naturally be able to shift my art asset workflow to the temple dungeon. And then when that is done, I will roll that over into whatever dungeon we do next. This means that by the time I have rough drafted the entire game, I won't be left with just six months of non-stop asset creation and visual effects tweaking. Because I'm layering those tasks gradually as I go. Don't get me wrong, I am not saying that this is a great workflow. The title of this video is probably something like why I make games inefficient. This is not necessarily an efficient workflow. Constantly shifting my focus between different tasks means that I never get into a deep flow with these things and deeply learn about these different disciplines. I don't level up my skills in them that quickly, I don't get faster working, I don't get much better at making good looking results. But this is really the only way that my brain will allow me to make this game. And knowing that it is inefficient is frustrating. But trying to force myself into a workflow that is ideally more efficient, when I know that it doesn't work for me in practice, is even worse. At some point, you have to ask what works for me personally. Perfect is the enemy of done. This isn't a perfect system that I'm working in, but it is one that is most likely to get me to the finish line and get this thing uploaded and available on Steam. Even if it is not perfect, it is a thousand times better than aiming for perfection and then never finishing. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Ferriat. And my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.